<clears throat> Welcome to another PyQGIS tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be working with creating new raster files. So I'm going to open up my Python console here and we'll get started. Open up the code editor and so I'm going to start a new script right here and I'm going to import uh, actually from OSGO import GDAL. So we're going to use GDAL this time. We used GDAL in the last video to create, or not to create, but to read a raster data set. So today we're going to create a raster data set. And the first thing I'll do is I'm going to create a file name, a place to save this data set. So I'll save it on my C drive um, and I'll name it just new raster.tiff. And once I have that done, um, we're just going to create an empty raster that's going to have size zero to start out with. Sorry, not size zero, just has value zero. So let's just make a new file, um, or no, not a new file, we need to import numpy first, sorry, oops. So import nump as np, and we're just going to create a file we want our that we want our raster to be in. So we're just going to call this raster band, and it's going to equal np zeros. And first, we're, going to, we're just going to give it a size. We're going to give it a size of 10 by 10. Okay, that should be good enough for now. And then we're simply going to use um, GDAL to now create an empty raster. Before we can do that, we need to get the GDAL driver that can create a file. So I'm going to get new variable driver, which is going to be GDAL.get driver by name. And since I'm creating a TIFF file, I'm going to get the GTIFF driver. That will give us the driver to create the file. And now what I can do is I can create the file, which I'm going to make a GDAL data source. I'm going to do driver.create. And here's where I'm going to give it the information about the file or the raster file I'm creating. So first, I will give it the file name, which is fn. My x size uh, is going to be 10. My Y size is going to be 10. Um, the number of bands is 1. And then I need to give it, I can give it a type. Um, so you do E type equals gdal.gdt. And this where I can choose a float or a byte. Um, we'll just do a float 32, that's a pretty common one, floating point values. Okay, and so that will create my new data set. So once that's created, I want to add my data to it. So I can do uh, ds.getRasterBand.write array, and then I can write my raster band data to it. So when I run this, what should happen is it should create that new raster file. And I just created this in a temporary location in my C temp. So let's go ahead and click run and we'll see if that file pops up. Um, and I'm just going to put a print statement here so that I know it's done. And let's go ahead and we'll click run. Okay, and I have an error. Oh, I couldn't type import correctly. So let's try run again here. And I have another problem which is line nine, positional argument. Oh, so this should be bands equals one. Okay, now let's click run. We have another one. Oh, and I forgot to choose the raster band I want to get, which is gonna be raster band one. Now let's click run again. And now we get it done. So let's go check out temp. You can see I have a new raster.tiff right there. So that is good news. 
Okay, let's go back over to our code. And what we want to do here is let's just go ahead and add our layer into the QGIS, inter QGIS interface, which you can do with our layer equals iFace dot add raster layer, and we'll give it the file name. We shouldn't need to give it a layer name, so that should add it into the interface. Let's go ahead and click run. Okay, and it says I need to specify a coordinate system because I haven't done that yet. Um, we'll just give it a Mercator. It doesn't have any spatial information associated with it yet, but we'll go ahead and click OK. And let's zoom to layer. And there you can see there's my raster layer. Okay. Now a big part of this is we're going to need to associate some spatial information with it. So what I'll do is we'll create a geotransform that gives it that information. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this real quick. Let's see. Actually, let's open up the properties first. So we've got our properties. We can go to information, um, dimensions, x10, y10. Um, width is 10. You can see we, our extent is just 0 to negative 10 and 10 to 0. So that means that our um, x and y cell sizes are just 1. This is going to be in... Um, degrees because I selected the WGS84 coordinate system. We might want some more information, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to remove this layer. Okay, and I'm just going to add some more information here for my raster. So I'm going to create a geo transformation. The geo transformation is going to give the information of the upper left cell coordinates, and it's going to give the information of the cell sizes. So what I can do is I'm going to put this into something like UTMs potentially. So we'll do 500,000 for, that's going to be the top left X. Um, and then I'm just going to check these values here to make sure I get them right. Okay, and so this is going to be my uh, X direction, so my west-east pixel resolution. Let's make it... Uh, let's make it 10, so that'll be 10 meters if we're doing UTMs. This is going to be a skew factor, which should always be 0 for most rasters. And then for my Y coordinates here is where we're at now. So my top left Y, um, I'm going to make that, oh, this should be 500,000, not 50,000. So we got 500,000. And we'll make this, let's see. I think that should be 4,600,000 is a good value for that. And here we have the skew, again, which will be 0. And here we have the north-south north pixel resolution, which for north-up images is negative. So we'll make this negative 10. Okay. And so there's our geotransform. And so now we can come down. We can go ds.set geotransform. And we can pass it GOT, okay, and that gives us our geotransform information. So now when I click run, it's going to bring this up again. I'm going to select something else. I'm going to select UTM. Any of these will do, and it just places it in the spots. We'll just say we're going to select 12, which is kind of here, western United States, and we'll click OK. And you can see that that place is my raster there. Now when I open the properties up here, what well, you'll see is that my width is 10, my height is still 10. Um, it should give me some more information about the bands. Let's see. Oh, my extent didn't update actually. So something isn't quite right. Let me just double check this and make sure that uh, I set that geo transform properly and we'll come back and, and run this again. Okay and so before let's go ahead and we'll try this we'll do ds uh, equals none and this just closes that data source uh, so let's go ahead and run that after I remove it here. Let's actually remove that layer and I'm going to come into my temp and I'll just uh, delete these. Okay, and see this is a problem, I didn't close it and so it's still open. But we'll go ahead and run this, see if it works now. 
So I'll click Run, UTM Zone 12, OK. Now let's open our properties. OK, and here you go. You can see that this has been moved now. So we have our uh, top left X and our top left Y. OK, good deal. Yeah. So X, Y, X, Y. OK. Good deal. We're in good shape there. Yep, so we have min x, min y, max x, max y, width and height of 10. And here's our pixel size, 10 and negative 10. OK, so we've got that figured out. The other step would be to just add a projection immediately to the raster instead of adding it once we load it into QGIS, which we can also do. So we'll go ahead and go through that now. And so I just need to add an import up here, which is OSR. And this is going to help us with our spatial references. And so here we can come down and we can do, uh, we'll make a spatial reference system that's going to be osr.spatialreference and open and close parentheses, go srs.setutm, oh, there should be a capital S, set UTM. If we want to set it to 12, we can make that 1. And then we can go to srs.set well known geographic coordinate system. And so we'll do NAD83. And then we can do ds.set projection. And here we'll take our SRS. And we'll export it to well-known text or WKT format. And that should give it to us. So let's go ahead and click Run and see if this works. OK, no errors. Oh, I'm going to remove this. And this should be our new one. So let's open it up. Here you can see that we have EPSG uh, 20 or 26912, which is NAT 83 UTM Zone 12 North. And just to show you that it worked, I'll remove this again, remove layer, OK, and see if I can delete it out of temp. OK, let me delete it that time because I properly closed it. So now I'll click Run. We'll open this back up again. And you can see that I've successfully added this raster, this new raster with the coordinate system, the projected coordinate system, and this geotransform information. So that's how you can programmatically create a new raster and add it into your QGIS interface. Um, if you guys have more questions about this, about working with the rasters or vectors in QGIS, please let me know. Um, I like any suggestions you have, give you some things to focus on. Uh, once again, thanks for watching and have a great day.